What can I charge for a VFX reel if you're just starting out? How to make money? Making 10k in a single deal. <laughs> okay, it's been a while since we have done a Q&A session on this channel. I think the last one we did was about a year ago when I hit 10,000 subscribers. But guys, right now we have crossed 20,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for choosing to watch my content, for supporting my channel. All the likes, all the comments, all these things that seem ordinary. It means a lot to me guys to be very honest it's because of you guys showing up that inspires me to show up even more so thank you so much guys to celebrate this milestone i'll be giving a 50 percent discount to my ultimate product lighting setup only if lighting is a problem for you if you are good at lighting 3d scenes you don't need to worry about this but if it's a struggle for you you can get it 50 percent off the first 20 people to click the link in the description to get it 50 percent off so i asked you guys on youtube discord instagram twitter basically everywhere that what is the biggest challenge that you're facing as a 3D animator, or as a 3D product animator. And I got some really interesting responses, almost 40 replies, so let's get into it today. Rendering animations because of my laptop specifications and getting a job project to work on. Rendering because of your laptop spec. Okay, that is an issue. And the way I did it early on, you have three options. One, you just wait. <laughs> you just have to wait for the entire project to render. That is always an option. If you have the time, you wait. If you have the money, it's better to pay for a render farm. There are lots of render farms out there. The one I've personally used the most will be Snap Render Farm. And the third option, if you don't have time or money, you can use Ship It Render Farm. The way it works is you use other people's laptops, other people's computers as a resource while everyone can use yours as a resource. So yeah, I think it's free. I've never tried it before personally, but you could explore that option. Daniel Crate asks, are there niches in 3D design and animation? Absolutely, there are niches. There is animation in general, and you can break it down into 2D and 3D. Here on this channel, we'll talk about 3D animation and specifically 3D product animation. So most people that think about animation, think about character animation, and you could choose to focus on that where you model design characters and animate them, make them do cool stuff, do backflips, act in an entire show. That is up to you. You can decide to focus on environment design. You can decide to focus on VFX and let that just be your thing. You're working with movie studios and all that. And even on that product animation, there are still lots of niches you could decide to get into. Personally, if you have been following my work, you know that I'm under the cosmetic and beauty brand niche. So most of my work is under the beauty niche. You can decide to focus on beverages or technology products like phones, laptops, all that or furnitures. There are lots of industries which can be different niches within product animation. Even for character animation, you can subdivide it into other different niches. So I would suggest you try things out and see what sticks, see what you enjoy doing the most. Personally, I love messing with products, especially beautiful cosmetic products. At the moment, using geometry nodes for animation in Blender. If you are trying to learn geometry nodes, I recommend Bad Normals. It's a YouTube channel. Check out their YouTube channel. They talk a lot about geometry nodes. Also, uh, default cube yeah default cube talks about geometry nodes it shows some cool background undercover skills undercover techniques and <laughs> that no one talks about so yeah check out your channel if you want to learn geometry nodes it's not something i've really really explored in depth so far that's why you don't see it as a tutorial on my channel tech hub says starting so our biggest challenge is starting man i don't know how to advise someone <laughs> in this situation i had a lot of doubts in at different stages in my career when i wanted to learn after effects I just assumed my laptop would not be able to carry it. And that was an HP Elitebook G1, like the oldest of the oldest. I assumed my laptop would be, wouldn't be able to handle it, but after trying it, it could handle something small. At least I got used to the move tool, the pen tool. So just start. Blender is free. Blender is free for Christ's sake. It's less than 400 MB. It's less than 300 MB, I think. And it's free. Just try it out. Get some tutorials and see what you can create. Yeah. Smooth animation. Thanks for the tip. I would consider this in my next tutorial. But if you have not seen my camera animation tutorial, that is the third Blender tutorial I posted on my channel. I talked about smooth camera animation, if that's what you're talking about. And then there are a lot of tutorials on my channel where I've showed you guys how to create some really cool smooth animation. So check it out. Osama Bin Studio says music selection. Personally, I find all my music from Envato Elements, but then it's not a free service. It's I think 200 and something dollars per year. So if you can grab that, absolutely grab it. This is not even sponsored. You don't only get music, you also get sound effects. You also get video templates, graphic templates, a whole bunch of stuff. So it is super valuable stuff that I pay for. You should consider paying for it too. If you're looking for free music, you should try checking out no copyright sounds on YouTube. 
they put some no copyright music uh something else you can do is to if you have a youtube channel which anyone can create just create a youtube channel today go into youtube studio and you'll see a music library where you can scroll around you find a lot of stock music a lot of stock sound effects that you can use in your videos no copyrights but yeah that is personally how i do it leo vfx artist says rendering i don't know what exactly the problem is here you should probably be more specific is it how to render because if the problem is how to render just stay put my next two videos yeah i'll talk about rendering my rendering settings in blender so that should help you out Niklaus said anything uv are you talking about uv unwrapping because personally i don't like modeling I'm, I'm very open about this i do not like the process of modeling i enjoy the process of animating more than modeling moving the camera about thinking of shots throwing things up and down that is where i enjoy staying and i enjoy creating so check out josh grambell's channel he talks about modeling a lot and also come into the group my discord community if you have problems with modeling a lot of people will be in there to help you out i know a lot of really good modeling artists on that group so yeah Check out my Discord community if you have not joined already. Praise 3D said, good laptop. Man, I don't know. I don't know what to say here because I had the same problem for a long time. Again, with my Elite book that I was trying to use to run After Effects, I also downloaded Blender on that laptop and I learned with the laptop. I rendered my donut tutorial. You should be seeing it on the screen here if I can find it. I rendered it on that laptop. It took years. <laughs> Not literal years it took a long time but then i still figured it out most of you guys have not seen some of my early works let me just show some of them here i just kept up creating and creating until i could get enough clients if the laptop speed for rendering is a problem check out ship it render farm like i mentioned sherlon black says lip sync i have no idea how to do a character lip sync in blender that is something i've never done i've explored character design and i've explored character animation but lip sync itself i know you can do lip sync with shape keys but i don't know the specifics so you should probably check out some tutorials on youtube or find some character animation discord communities to ask about your issues still made it said idea is fire in your head but execution is nothing short of poopoo -poo. <laughs> i can relate to that man i can relate to that a lot it's especially in my early days where you have this really dope idea in your head and when you are creating it it just looks very weird and awkward man how did i even push through that challenge i think you just have to do it again and again until you get good you just have to get good you have to trust the process enough to know that at some point it might be your 10th project it might be your second project it might be your 30th project you are going to get really good you're going to get better compared to when you started so yeah over time you get better and then something i always do is to not be too locked in into my original plans so if i try something out probably fluid simulation and it didn't work out exactly I try to find a creative way to communicate the same thing, to do the same shot. So if what exactly I planned did not make sense, I try to find something creative to do instead. So yeah, that might help you out. Koka Olua Femi said, to understand the main terminologies and common functions peculiar to most tools. Yeah, I would suggest you watch the Blender Guru tutorial. It really breaks all this down, the basic terminologies, modeling, texturing, lighting, all that, and how to use this tool. So yeah, check it out. Chizai Studio says, making 10K in a single deal. Okay, we have gotten to the, <laughs> the business side of the questions. Making 10K in a single deal. Usually the biggest deals in my experience from my clients are deals that are stacked, that have multiple deliverables within them. So... You are not just delivering one 15 seconds video for 10k and then you are packaging an entire deal so my advice for you is, would be to try and stack your value offering stack your deliverables when you're offering clients tell them something like this social media is a game of volume the more you put out the more your chances of getting the attention your brand needs so instead of us doing this one video it would be better for us to do 15 videos seven videos five videos that way they will have more chance of grabbing more attention reaching more people and getting more eyeballs to your brand try to pitch it to them that the bulk here the project is the more value they get and also if you are doing it in bulk give them some form of discount for example if you charge one thousand dollars for one video tell them you can do five videos for four thousand dollars or something or 10 videos for seven thousand dollars it's just a marketing thing you can do as a business professional to push them over the edge to actually pay you for a big project so yeah that is how i've been able to close bigger projects in the past just by doing more and piling things up what can i charge for a vfx reel if you're just starting out 
what should be your price point. If you have charged for 3D projects in the past, I recommend charging something similar. But if you have never charged before, what I usually advise people to do is go on Fiverr, go on Upwork, search for the same exact thing that you are trying to create for the client, and then take a look at it. What is the average? Not the average of the worst, but the average of the best. You look at the best possible videos that people have made on those platforms and how much they charge. So if you see that the very cheap ones are $100, $50, $25, the super high quality ones of massive professionals are like $3,000, $5,000, $7,000 or something. And you see that, okay, these guys that create something that I can create are charging $1,000, $500, $1,500, charge around that price. And then don't be afraid to call the price for your clients. Just put it out there. The worst they can say is no. Side says modeling and smooth animations. These two things are my biggest challenges. I think I've touched on modeling and also on smooth animation. So yeah, I refer to that part of the video. Lawson Richie Dennis says rigging, rigging, rigging. If that guy is a human, he'll be a gangster. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine, especially rigging like characters. When I explore that part of 3D, it was a headache until I figured out a lot of things. So it depends on what you're trying to rig. If you're trying to rig products or special characters i would recommend check out polyford's channel he really talks a lot about rigging rigging characters rigging a spider rigging dr octopus tentacles so when you go through these tutorials you have a pretty solid foundation about rigging for special cases so if it's for characters that is a whole other thing you need to learn if it's for products you want to open up a product and close it yeah you should check out derek elliott's channel i think he did something like this in one of his tutorials too so yeah check it out dg said uv unwrapping i've talked about this before Ajibola Motion says balancing work and life. I think it's a never ending process, the work life balance. It is a balancing act that you just continue to do where you try to make sure something doesn't lean too much on the other side. And if it does, find a way to recover it. Because there are some months where I wouldn't go to the gym at all because I'm swamped with projects. I have work to do. But I make sure I don't let that become my lifestyle. Oh, just because I didn't go to the gym for two months, I won't go to the gym again. So whenever I'm done with the project, I resume the gym and balance this out. Whether it's your relationships or your health or whatever is suffering because of work, find a way to not let that thing go. Even if you reduce it, make sure at some point you bring it back up so that things get balanced. It's a balancing act. Sometimes you would focus more on work. Sometimes family might have an emergency and you focus more on family so yeah it's a balancing act we just need to try our best i am a cholera says storytelling i don't think you can learn storytelling from watching technical tutorials i think you need to learn about story as a separate topic so go on youtube and search for how to tell stories or storytelling 101 understand storytelling from two perspectives from writers and from videographers because i didn't start learning 3d out of the blue i was already a cinematographer i was already creating videos for clients so that was the mindset i brought in telling stories creating short films and then bringing it into 3d those skills will translate a lot so yeah you should explore it check some youtube videos about storytelling as a videographer as a cinematographer they will break down a lot of things like framing shots and all that and that would absolutely help you out moendas says not knowing what to type to find a tutorial okay <laughs> have i ever been in this situation before okay that's true that's true that's true I think we have all been in this situation at some point where you don't know exactly what is called and it's really frustrating. I think it's only Google that can help you at this point. Something I do is to type whatever nonsense is in my head, like splashy water animation. Let's say what I'm looking for is fluid simulation, but I type splashy water animation on Google. Then I go to the image tab. Then I look through the images for anything that looks remotely similar to what I'm looking for. And then when I find it, whether it's a website or a YouTube video, I go on it to see what it's about. And if the visuals is what I'm looking for, then I need to learn the terminologies. Because if the visuals is what I'm looking for, the title will be different. And the title will say something like fluid simulation. Then I'll know it's called fluid simulation. I do it too for music search. When I'm searching for music, I just type whatever nonsense is in my head. I type the randomest things. I could type... Paris of the Caribbean style music or something random. Then when I see some results of music that I like, I'll now look at what they are actually called. I'll say, oh, it's actually called this upbeat music or stomp music or whatever music. So yeah, that is the process I personally go through. I don't know if that helps. Adish Digital says, finding clients and finding perfect footages takes hours to do so and making products. Making product, I think you're talking about modeling here. I touched on it a bit. Finding clients, I think I touched on it a bit, but then the price of finding clients can go, come in two 
directions. Either the client reaches out to you or you reach out to the client. I personally recommend doing both because they both work hand in hand to push your career forward. For example, if you have 100 followers on Instagram and you're reaching out to clients, the results you're going to get, the perception you're going to get from this client is going to be absolutely different from someone that has grown their followership to 10,000 followers or 5,000 followers that has more quality works on their page. The response is going to be different. So you have to work on both sides. You have to share your work, shout about your work on social media, create content about your work. And you also have to reach out to clients on IG, reach out to clients on Facebook groups, on Discord, on LinkedIn. But if you want to hear more about this, like details about all this, remember I'm doing a webinar about attracting quality clients. It's happening on Tuesday. Link is in the description. When it comes to finding the perfect footage for VFX videos, uh, I've personally run into issues like that before, but I go on Envato Elements and I just start searching like a crazy person. I also go on Pexels because Pexels is free and I start searching for empty streets. It depends on the term. Like that's the thing I talked about before. When you find the perfect term, when you are doing your search, whenever you see what you like, look at what the person named it. There will be a keyword there that would be very useful to you that you didn't think about before. So it might be subway or street or something like that so yeah it's an annoying process but you have to search and search get to the seventh the 15th page until you see what you find and make sure you note the keywords for what you actually find what website can you post videos or pictures you created to show off your portfolio to potential clients behance period behance and it has an algorithm that gets people to view your project so it's not just like a website where no one finds you people actually find you via behance i've closed a couple projects just from me posting my portfolio on behance if it's something that you guys would find valuable i can make a video about it but you could just go on behance and type my full name or type creative staff studios on behance check out my profile check out how i structure my own projects i put the actual animation i put some screenshots so yeah check it out and you can model your own portfolios in that direction i think behance is the best way to show off your portfolio if you don't have a website if you have a website if you have paid for a website you have different pages you have a portfolio page that is even better than behance because it shows professionalism not being able to render in cycles because of how long it takes i believe i touched this a bit so just go earlier in the video steven crates he says sometimes i feel like i've reached a plateau in terms of learning where before in a few days sometimes even in a day i learn something new by watching tutorials and stuff but nowadays when i'm free i struggle finding something new to learn man i usually say this tutorial hell tutorial hell don't get locked in tutorial jail it's not a good place to be as a creative person as an artist or as a business person don't be locked there find personal projects that you should work on you can be inspired by anything i've created a 3d animation that was inspired by a marvel scene it has nothing to do with what i currently do but then i use it as an opportunity to learn about a new render engine explore new things explore new camera movements camera angles and all that so i think you should find a personal project to work on and when you're done with that find another personal project it's a better process than just going from tutorial to tutorial because if you say Today, I want to work on a camera. I'm looking at the camera right now. So that's what came to my mind. A camera animation. I want to see how I can break the lens into an exploded view, pop everything back together, spin it this way, do this, do that. Then go look for inspiration. Then when you get to a roadblock, that is when you need tutorials. I prefer using that process personally. So instead of falling into the tutorial trap, I'll suggest you do what I said, work on personal projects. But then if you are looking for people to inspire you, check out the video I made about how to learn product animation. I listed some really cool artists, some really cool Blender users, Blender creators, YouTube creators that talk about animation, talk about Blender. So I will link that video here if you have not seen it. Check those guys out. You can decide to focus on environment today and just learn about environment. You can decide to focus on lighting tomorrow and do a bunch of stuff with lighting. So it depends on you. King Cody said lighting in EV. I'm sure there are a bunch of tutorials out there for EV because EV is a lot better than how it was then when I started in 2020. And when I started in 2020, I used EV a bunch for a couple projects. This Tesla animation project I did way back, I rendered it in EV. And then there were not a lot of tutorials out there then, but then there are a lot of lighting tutorials out there now. So I don't think it should be too difficult to find good lighting tutorials for EV. April said, personal project ideas. Go on Behance, go on IG. What I do, I always like something to do on IG. When you see an animation project, 
double click it just like it you are telling ig that this is something i'm interested in so they will show you more of it to the point where your entire explore page will be filled with cool stuff in fact you can start by searching for whatever you're looking for cool product or marshals product animation search for different terms then when you see something you like double click it and save it so have a collection for things like that 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 will really help you out i learned that when i was working with a client on a long-term contract basis i was doing different projects for them different concepts so at some point you feel like you don't have any more ideas and the best way to solve that problem would be to save all these videos as inspiration for the future so when you need inspiration go into that folder so it's not something that you start looking for when the project has started it should be something you randomly do when you are less busy go on behance and scroll check out some projects save it to a store to a mood board go on instagram save it to a collection and then when you need inspiration go through that collection you've already saved matt also said smooth transitions we talked about that for a bit i don't understand what smooth transitions mean though i think someone should explain exactly what they mean by smooth transition or maybe i would think about it for a while and see if i can do a tutorial for it how to transition from short to short where it's seamless you mean seamless transitions yeah when you can go from hmm, i think i know what you mean I'll think about it when I'm planning future videos. Giganet says how to make money. <laughs> that is a very open-ended question, very loaded question. How to make money? The answer would be deliver value. That is the only way you can make money. You have to offer some form of value. And I can model characters is no value, or I can create models is no value, or I can animate is no I can use Blender, that is no value. But I can use Blender to create product animation commercials. That is value. You are adding value. So it's not it's not just you learning the skill, you deciding that, oh, I'm going to help this business grow by creating a bunch of shorts animations for them that they can post every day. That is value adding. So you need to find a way to craft an offer, to craft value. Tani 3D says lack of resources for real. What resources exactly? I don't know. I don't know how to position this. You mean hardware resources? You mean... Uh, learning resources, what resources exactly. Tani also says, one thing to learn would be the best platform to tap into the right market as well. It depends on the industry you're targeting. For example, cosmetic industry, you'll find them on Instagram. A lot of them have representation on Instagram and sometimes on YouTube. For uh, more corporate industries, more fintech industries, you find them on Instagram, but you mostly see the executives on LinkedIn. So it depends on the kind of people you want to reach. If it's real estate companies, for example, you find a bunch of them on Facebook. So it also depends on your target audience. So yeah, LinkedIn is one of them. Behance is a good platform too to find clients. Instagram is one. Facebook groups is another. And Tani also says, most of us entry-level artists find it hard to solidify our stance in the field where there is barely any space for or opportunity. Some don't even have access to mentors. When I was starting out, as I've said before, I only had Derek Elliott's channel to learn product animation from. But now there are a bunch of people, including myself, that are creating things like this. So, yeah, I think it's better now than then, honestly. And when it comes to solidifying your stance, I believe you just have to keep hammering on what you do. And specialization also helps here. If you are just a generic 3D artist, it'll be hard for people to place you at a specific stance. Some people are really good when it comes to stylized characters and that has become their thing. When someone needs a stylized character, you think of them. When someone needs cosmetic animation or product animation in general, they think of myself. That is why a bunch of my clients are in the same state. <laughs> a bunch of them are in the same state and they do exactly the same thing because I have solidified myself in that niche. So it's all about picking a niche and I don't think that is easy to do. You just have to experiment a lot until you find something you really enjoy doing. I would love to see more animation tutorials and I'm also wondering how is the back and forth revisions with the clients handled. 3D is not easy to make different concepts for one advert. I know in huge companies, motion designers make storyboards, but how does a solo freelancer handle as showcasing the concept without give going into production? First of all, you would like to see more tutorials, yeah. Most tutorials coming up, coming up this year. Also wondering how back and forth is handled. Personally, most of my projects come with contracts. So there is a clear term in there for how many revisions we are going to do. So let's say you are doing three free revisions. 
you are free to change as many things as you want for those three times but if you need something extra to add an extra fee that is how i structure mine and as regards concepts you should also make storyboards but not something serious i sketch a lot of my projects way back into 2021 i have a sketchbook where i sketch a bunch of these projects there's no need to make sense to most people just try to sketch out your idea okay you are watching inspiration for example you are looking at different inspiration and you see a shot that you really like and you say okay what if i do this with this product maybe it was sands that was coming out in the inspiration and now you are saying okay instead of sands it's going to be bubbles we are going to turn it this way so you sketch all that out so that is my personal process i don't do proper storyboards where i create animatics or where i cut up storyboards and add music to you know i don't do all that elaborate process i just make sure i have sketches i have inspiration i have a mood board that my client and i are on the same level of understanding concerning what i'm trying to achieve with the project that is personally how i do it pranjal said starting is the toughest challenge yeah i can only imagine i talked about this earlier in the video yeah starting is hard you just need to get to it muhammad Tahir says i want to create smooth and perfect motions for products but failed hmm. seems like this smooth animation and smooth transition is actually a problem so i think i need to add it actually add it to the list of videos that are coming up how to create smooth transitions and smooth animations so yeah thank you for the idea and finally i show blender says i'm unsure on what to price my product cgi services the thing is when you're starting out you have to find your base price the research i talked about then going to freelance website finding your base price start from there you need to start from somewhere you need to close one client first then after you do that, you need to increase your price. My personal rule would be if I'm getting three yeses back to back, then I know I'm doing something wrong. If every single client that is reaching out to me is ending up in a yes, that means I'm not pricing my service high enough. So I need to increase it. But if I'm getting a lot of no's, it means I'm not reaching out to the right people. Pricing is relative. To be very honest, you will see something that someone charged $300 for and someone else charged seven thousand dollars for i am very serious pricing is very relative if you check on a lot of these freelance website check on general check on upwork you see different ranges <laughs> for the same kind of thing so it depends on a lot of things it depends on your experience and how far you have been in the industry it depends on your social media presence that is also important that is something i'm talking about in the webinar too the bigger your social media presence the more influence you have online because basically social media is your cv in this day and age so the bigger your social media presence, the more money you can also command. So there is that. So there's a lot of things to this topic. But I would suggest you take the approach that I talked about earlier and figure out your base price. So guys, that's basically it. This has been a really long one. This recording has been interrupted like three, four times. But you will notice because of the slick editing. But I've had to stop and start it again and again and again. I'm doing it for you guys. Thank you so much for showing up for me. Thank you so much for taking this channel to this level i'm committed to create more to share more to do more remember the live webinar that is happening on tuesday click the link in the description i'll see you there